I was just wrapping up the 2018-2019 coyote season. Another dog down on a school night. We stayed hooked, stayed on the call, kept calling. And then this other this other dog came out from across the road and we lost it. I don't know where it went. Finally, I look back and this big male here, it's probably a three-year-old male, comes out of the woods, checks up, and I put a poke on him. I'm shooting a 50 grain, 22-250, super performance Hornady at 4,000 feet a second. Pulled the trigger, had a slight hesitation before I heard that thump. Y'all you know what that thump means, so. We're guesstimating 275, 300 yards, don't know. This was about the time a farmer reached out to me with an unusual problem. Despite the huge dent I'd put on the coyote numbers on the farm, there were now other varmints moving on the property. They were causing a lot of issues with property and crop damage. In some cases, cattle were even breaking their legs. I accepted the challenge in an effort to help the farmer, but I knew I was now tasked with entering uncharted waters. I knew to be successful, I would have to approach this like a coyote hunter would. Food. Water. And shelter. These were the things I needed to look for first. I was in the beginning stages of trying to figure out my opponent. I realized that I need to build a rifle to suit my needs. I've always had luck with the Savage 93R17, so I had to make sure I had accurate rounds for the job. Through a series of trial and error and a lot of inconsistent shot placements on target, I thought I was ready to move forward, but I wasn't confident with my choice of ammunition. I'm gonna shoot him in the face. I continued to have constant flyers. I finally landed on the reliable Hornady 17 grain VMAX. Its accuracy was second to none. Now it was time to head back out into the field and put all my hard work to test. This was about the time that I had my first lethal encounter. My newfound success was only the start. Then came the second farmer. <laughs> then the third. This went on and on for a long time and each time my confidence got a little bit higher. Then came the one that knew how to hide the best, wouldn't give you a very good shot and you had to take it without damaging any property. Heck, even Sasquatch got involved. He took a quick liking to it and it began to put him down himself. Here he is, coming down, see him? Oh, you hit Go that ahead. one. Reload, 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 get the other one. He's right on top. See the other one? Yeah, I see the other one. Bust him. Oh yeah! <laughs> A double. Farmers began to talk and it didn't take long for us to be known as the Groundhog Snipers. Got him that time. Heck, things were working out great. We were putting down groundhogs and we were gaining new cow ground all the time. That's Hogzilla. Three hogs down this evening. Just like putting down coyotes, this became a newfound way to make relationships with farmers. Every Saturday morning, the farmers would gather at the local store, tell the tale of the groundhog killing. We were helping them out and having fun along the way. There's three. This was more so probably the tail end of the night vision footage that I had on my coyote rifle. I was running the Pulsar N355 and the XXL Predator Reaper IR light. I was just getting into the thermal game and picked up my first scanner. Little did I know at the time, this would also be a very useful tool for searching for groundhogs in the dark shades of an old barn. That was the summer that we helped out so many farmers and made relationships, gained new coyote ground and just had a blast. If you haven't tried whistle pig hunting, it's a great way in the spring and the summer to keep your shooting skills intact. This was the summer that the Savage 93R17 cut its teeth for me. It showed its way every time, true and true. Its accuracy was unmatched. I just started looking at the suppressor aspect of things and thought there's just something missing. This was the summer that I retired this rifle. The phone calls for groundhogs became few and far between. 
I put a serious dent in the numbers that summer, documenting 33 personal groundhog kills. Three down for the evening. Time to call it quits. <laughs> we had single-handedly taken out every single groundhog in the state of Indiana. Or at least we thought. Hello? 